Okay, so now the only thing that we have left to do is the uh, is the search, I believe. So we have manage following lists. Okay, that's great. Now we have our search, um, and on the search we can. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this or before or not, but there's a wonderful website called RubyToolbox.com, and I go here all the time. It's uh, great to know like they say know your options and it's very good to know your options so I'm gonna go in here and do a uh, look for a search um, a search tool uh, and I'm probably not gonna use it because it's a little bit overkill for what I'm doing here um, it's a little bit overkill but at least we know how what we can use and how we can use them. So here we have Thinking Sphinx, which I do use on a couple of other projects. Search Logic, Sunspot, Axis Ferret I've used before, Axis Solar I've used before. Um, these type of things are, are are great. So if you were to do this right, you might want to go ahead and install Thinks as Sphinx. But because I don't really see the need for it on the scope of this project, I'm going to go in and actually have it make it so that we can just search for names now we don't have first name and last name so the only thing we have is the username so initially I want to make sure that we are indexing the usernames because that's going to be vital for the search to work properly so to do that I'm going to load up my schema and look at my users I don't have any indexes set up so let's go ahead and create one so script generate migration add indexes to users okay and actually we probably want to set up indexes on the friendships as well so uh, and actually on the flits as well so I'm just gonna do uh, add indexes uh, to everything so probably should have named that add indexes to everything or just add indexes but that's okay so first thing we want to do is add index to users and we want to have username uh, and that's it's as simple as doing that uh, so we have our username. We might want to add our email address as well because yeah, let's add that because we want to um, we want to be able to search by email address. So if we have that now, we want to now we have our friendships. We want to uh, index user ID and friend ID. So add index uh, friendships user ID and uh, let's see here friend ID and of course we need to add a uh, index for user ID on flits so flits user ID and there we go and I believe we just add a remove index here I don't even know if that's how it works but I'm pretty sure it is so uh, let's run our migration and there we go we added all of our uh, all of our indexes and now we're good to set up searches so let's go in and add a search box right above here and just because it's gonna be a little bit fun I think I'd like to make it so that it does look a little cooler than our standard search box so something like this let's view how they do this um, let's see here Oops. All right, let's see how they do this over here. Okay. Yeah, I mean this is possible to do, but it's going to it's it's a little bit complicated. If you there's probably their search button right here that they're using. Um, as you can see it is their search button. They're actually using that within uh within a a rounded div. So, let's give it a shot. I mean, why not? We're almost done anyway. So let me go Eric uh, lessons, flitter, public uh, images, nav search submit is what they're using. So okay, so we have our nav search submit, which is this is probably a hover or a, a regular hover and a disabled. So um, let's go ahead and show that, open that with uh, Photoshop 
just so I can see the sizes that we're dealing with. Um, if you look here, this you could tell is our size. So this actually has to be the exact height of our of our uh, search bar. So it's 25 pixels high. So let's go in and create a um, in our CSS. Let's go in and create a search bar. All right, and we're going to say height is 25 pixels because that's what we know. Our width is going to be um, let's see one. 160 pixels wide um, and background is going to be our image there. Actually, we, uh, hmm, huh, well, let's, let's not worry about that quite yet. Okay, so I want to grab those rounded edges that we're using on the other stuff. Let's see, if, here we go, right here. I don't know if I want to use the five pixels though. I probably want to shrink that down a little bit more, it's like three or something like that. Make it a little bit tighter of a uh, rounded edge, and we do want to add a border to it. Uh, actually, a border 1px solid, and let's see what Twitter's using here. Twitter's using like a like a, a darker gray. So yet again, let's use our color picker. Grab that color. Uh, let's see here. Ah. 999. Okay. Um, and let's take a look and see what we're looking like. Uh, of course, I didn't add it yet, so I need to add it. So let's see here. And that would be in our side contents, which looks like I don't have open anymore. And we want to put it right here. Div. All right. So. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. Um, so that being the case, let's uh, let's add a uh, form here real quick. Actually, let's add the form around the outside. Uh, form for uh, form tag, uh, and then let's say action equals actually um, form tag URL equals search um, do. Uh, and then right here we're going to have our um, text field uh, Q is going to be the name and we're going to uh, set the, uh, the value to Q um, and uh, then we're going to have our submit tag and uh, actually instead of a submit tag we're going to have the image image tag so uh, input type equals submit. I haven't figured out how to do this yet with Rails Helper, so I always do this by hand. Um, type equals su submit. Actually, it's type equals image. Uh, source equals images slash. Um, what was that image? Nav search submit. So nav search submit dot png. Um, we're going to give this an ID of submit, uh, actually, an ID of, yeah, of search submit button because uh, there's going to be some unique uh, things here. And uh, I believe that's all we need. So that's going to probably throw off the, the look a little bit here. Huh? It doesn't even work. Let's see here. I need our end tag. refresh there we go totally throws it off but at least we have something that we can look at so we need to set our width of the text field tag itself to about 130 so let's uh, go in and mess with our styles a little bit more and so we have our search bar search bar input um, input dot text so I'm going to add a class to that with equals what was it 130 pixels um, border zero um, height is going to be uh, let's say 23 pixels um, okay so 
We have that. Let's go back into our side contents and add a class here of text. Let's see how that looks. Okay, much better so far. Um, so now we also need to make it so that it floats to the left because we want the submit button floating right. Um, so what do we call it here? We called it the search submit button uh, float right width is um, our width is going to be uh, let's see here view image width is going to be 28 pixels and then height is going to be was it 25 uh, yeah it was 25 pixels so there we have that refresh so we're almost there you can see you can see where we're going with this at least okay so difference on this one is that they actually use a div I believe to submit that so if we're gonna do that let's let's do it right say okay well we're gonna have a div ID equals that and then um, maybe just a little spacer in the middle and uh, so hit refresh and now we actually have to put that image into here so background um, URL images and then I forgot the name of it again nav search submit uh, top left no repeat actually gonna, instead of top left I'm actually going to use zero zero because we are going to be modifying that on hover so let's see here if I hit refresh there we go it looks pretty dang good I want to add a border on the left side though um, and make that 999 um, one pixel solid 999 and that'll make it so that it's a little bit more distinct there as you can see alright so now our input text we're going to have font size is going to be 16 pixels and line height we're going to have uh, 22 pixels so it kind of centers itself in the middle there um, blah 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 alright so now we need a uh, padding left of maybe three pixels alright let's go ahead and refresh that again oops see what happened is our padding overdid it so we need to make the width compensate for the padding so let's do 125 and refresh blah 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 now I want it maybe a little bit smaller but I want it to be a little further down so uh, let's see here let's add a padding top on this um, as two pixels and maybe make the line height 22 pixels so let's give that a shot again it does look better but it totally blocks out the bottom so we're gonna say background color is transparent let's see if that helps there we go alright and uh, I, I, I like it you know, let's see what they have here oops let's see what they have here for color they have black I like it I think it looks good let's actually round it off a little bit more though it does look like it needs a little bit more rounding uh, refresh that there we go now you see that that looks a little funky over here and I don't know how to fix that I can honestly say I have no idea how to fix that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change that back to three and and leave it like that because I think that looks better than the other way so okay so now we have our search uh, let's make our margin on the top 15 pixels like all the rest so that we can space that out a little bit and uh, now we need to set it so that when this search button is hovered we actually change the position of the uh, of the of the board of the uh, button. So on hover, we're going to have uh, background position, and we're going to have it be. Uh, I think the first one on this one is actually Y. So I'm going to have negative twenty five zero. And I don't know if this is going to work. It might make it go white, but it might work. Um, search submit button hover background position maybe I need pixels there yeah I made it go white so um, I probably got these 
backwards. So let's try that. There we go. So now you can see that. Now, of course, we want the hover also to have a cursor of hand. Um, and I actually always use pointer because that's more globally accepted with different browsers. So we have our hand here, blah, 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 and that. So what we want to do is a couple of things. Um, we want to make it so that when we click that, it will um, submit the form. So to do that, I'm going to add a simple little uh, on-click method here. And what I want to do is, let's see here, uh, jQuery, submit form, and let's let someone else figure out this problem for me. So let's see here. Um, form submit. Let's see here. I think the way to do this would be um, form, and if we gave this form a name, um, actually, I yeah, because we don't know the we don't know, and this is the problem with the form tag is it's kind of hard because I don't think you can just say name equals blah. I think you actually have to have something else. So I'm going to look up the docs real quick on the form tag for Rails and uh, we'll see how to fit the HTML options in there. So you have your URL, your options, your parameters, and your block. So we're on here. We have multi-part. Maybe it will work. Let's see. Name equals search form. Let's refresh our page and uh, where are we screwing up here? It's right here. So let's delete this. Okay, so let's view our source code here. And uh, no, see it's saying URL is search. Um, yeah, name is search form. That's not what we want. So I think what we can do is you know, I'm again. I'm kind of not quite sure how to do this. So let's see. Maybe needs that. No. Um, URL. Maybe this needs to be wrapped first, and then maybe we can pass in those. This is. What I just need to learn this one time and then have it imprinted on my brain. But right now, it's just not. So. Let's just, uh, uh, all right, let's do it the not so great way, but it still works way. Um, let's see here. If we use, um, if we use our traversing methods and actually go up, so parent. And I think if we pass parent with a filter, ah, uh, dang, I used this the other day. Um, let's see, parent, get the direct parent of an element. Next content, closest. There we go, it's the closest. That's right. Uh, the closest, and we just find the closest form. So this is actually a really pretty cool method here. So what we can do is over here we say, uh, and this is only available on jQuery two point uh, or one point three. So if we say right here on click, um, and we say this, this dot closest form dot submit. Okay, so that actually should submit it. Hopefully, if if we're right, that should submit it on click. Click. Did anything happen? Uh, I don't think anything happened at all. So let's take a look here at our uh, sorry at our firebug. Refresh this. Click. All right, this closest doesn't exist so 
Um, instead, let's just do closest. Uh, search that closest. So, what version of jQuery are we using? Let's see. 1.3.2. It should be working. So maybe my, maybe I'm wrong in how I'm doing it. Um, let's see here. Instead of doing it right here, let's go ahead and do it in a script at the bottom again. And actually, because this is so global, why don't we add this to our uh, JavaScripts? Uh, our application, I mean, application.js. So here we're going to. Uh, okay, so really quickly, this is how we did it. I ended up putting this into the uh, JavaScript file, into the application.js. Added this quick function here. Looks for the search button. On click, it will take the clicks or that that um, elements closest form object and submit it so there we go so now if we do ASDF and hit submit it actually does do a submit we can verify that with our our uh, with this right here so you can see the queue was submitted which and this is a little odd it's actually sending the key and the value of Q which doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's see why that is. Um, so if we go to, uh, we're going to go to our site contents, and uh, so we have text field Q, then params of Q, that's our value that we're passing in. But let's see here. So our text field, we need a text field tag. I believe that's why it was being odd. So let's hit resend here, and there we go. So now if we hit submit, it actually does do a search, but now it's doing a search for URL. So instead we want to have it just go to search. Um, and uh, URL, instead of having it just go to search, we're going to have to say search path, and that search path will be let's see here map dot search search um, uh, and controller will be home and action will be search and uh, there we go so let's go to home let's add a quick search method and uh, on here we're going to do params uh, Q so uh, Q equals params Q and uh, we're going to do uh, user dot find uh, actually we want to find user by both username and or uh, email address so the Q can be email address portion of an email address or username or portion of a username so we're going to do user dot find by search query and then pass in the query term so users equals that and then we'll go ahead and pass that down to our view so we need to create a quick view here for search and let's say users dot length so we're gonna say how many users we found and uh, now let's go back to our form just make sure everything looks good. Uh, let's see here. So I'm always getting confused on where stuff is. Okay, so we have our form here. Now we, instead of having that, we want to actually use the instance variable if it exists. If not, I'll just use blank. So let's go back to our page. Let me turn this off. Ref um, here, let's just go to following. And uh, so now, if we do a search for um, A, we want to find all of the people uh, who are uh, that have A in their name. So something happened here, though. You see, we have our form tag, and it didn't quite work right. So let's take a look at our form and see what's going on. 
So here we have our form is equals slash following question mark URL equals. So we don't want that. Maybe it needs to be like that. So A, we hit search, and there we go. It did work. So we have search, and we passed in our, if you look here, we did pass in our A as our query variable, and then find by search query. Uh, so let's go back to our user model and let's add a quick method here and find actually we want to have it be static because we're calling it direct we're not calling it from ourself find by search query and we're gonna do just pass in the queue here so I think that's how it was set up let's uh, go back to our home controller find by search query uh, find by search query yep we're set so here we want to have um, I'm going to use a, uh, oh, how am I going to do this? Let's see here. Because well, I don't want people to be able to hack this or inject this at all. So what I want to do is um, I want to do a, uh, let's do a user.findall. And I'm just going to kind of wing it here as we go. So we're going to say uh, username like, and then I'm going to pass in that, like that, which in my experience in the past, for some reason, I don't think this will work. But we'll give it a shot. Or um, email like that. And again, I, I just don't think this is going to work. So. Q, Q. Um, so what that should do, and the reason this, I already know this isn't going to work, the reason it won't work is because when you pass in that, it doesn't actually p just replace it. It puts it in as a string, so it's going to have double brackets there. So what I need to do is I need to, um, I need to just have it be like or like, and here I need to have um, set that and then there we go like that now help me out guys if I'm opening myself up for SQL injection please let me know because I, I do need to know this so there we go we have a user dot find so let's uh, let's go ahead and give us a test with the console so if we go to our console and uh, let's see here script console and uh, let's say user dot find by search query and then pass it a so that gives us all of them with a in the username or a in the email so let's see here a and and x and one equals one so yeah I don't think that it's injectable but we'll see so if I just do cavnab there we go if I do m there we go so that does work so let's uh let's go ahead and continue and wrap this thing up because it's been far too long we've been working on this and uh, I really enjoy although I really enjoy doing this I definitely want to get on to some new stuff because uh I'm starting to I'm starting to dream about flitter and I just I don't want to do that so okay uh let's go back to our home controller and now we know this is going to work it's going to return a uh an array of users so what we can do is because we have our following um, already laid out we kind of want to use the same thing where if we're not following them we want to be able to follow them so I'm gonna steal the same layout from uh, following uh, and put it into search so go to following I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste that all right here and uh, so I'm going to instead of remove friend I want to add friend. Uh, in fact, I think we already have that set up. If I go to actual show and we have uh, toggle follow path. So there we go. We can go to our toggle follow path. Um, and I'm actually going to take that whole thing right there and put that right here. Actually, well, let's go back and look at that again form text. So that's just for one. So here we can actually place our 
we we let let's keep that down here as notes for right now all right so let's keep that down here as notes for right now but we will we will get back to that okay so here we have our, our friends list and let's instead we're gonna call it users list and user and uh, I guess you know what that's just pointless let's go back up and and call it friends here so let's say friends okay so now we come back down here we have our friends list and um, here we just say we have our link to their stuff okay that's good now here's the use the user now we don't know if we're following them or not so that's where this code is going to come in so if um, so if current user dot is friend and then we're going to pass in the friend and we're going to show stop following um, value equals um, all right else we're going to show follow does that make sense okay so now we have that um, so just that alone let me just take all this out let's go back and let's go to that page that alone should show us um, quite a bit so should get us started on a good path here so let's see here refresh okay so here we go we have follow 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 now ah, there's a thing right there we don't want to be able to follow ourselves. so let's do this to where we um, well you know I'm not gonna worry about it all those who have uh, who really want to go out and, and figure this out go for it you are more than welcome to so there we go so now we want to go back to our search and let's add this back in and uh, so now now we have enough information to go by so our toggle friends path our toggle follow path um, we want to find out exactly where that goes so toggle actually let's go to routes we have our toggle follow so we have username toggle follow so let's uh, let's go back to our search so that we know that's our URL that we need to, to use so it's actually this name slash toggle follow is what we need to use so okay so there we go that should be our URL that we use um, I don't know if it requires a post or a get but we're going to use a post um, and then after it fixes itself or after it does it we're going to um, change the uh, text to um, uh, let's see we're going to change the text from stop following to follow or from follow to stop following so um, so to do that we need to have an ID here of um, button underscore and then we're gonna have it be the friend dot username that way we're able to access it so um, so after it's done we're just gonna say if um, if uh, actually we can just use this if this dot attribute name is equal to actually not name but value and actually I think instead of doing that we just use val um, val is equal to uh, stop following then we're going to say this dot val follow and then we're going to just add a little else this dot val stop following okay and we don't need that anymore so that should work um, this actually should work everything should work let's give it a shot 
So let's hit refresh. I'm going to open up our our console here so we can see what's going on in the background. So if I hit follow, um, so it did go through and it did follow them. Let's view. If we refresh, it should say stop following. So we have a hiccup here, and the hiccup is is right here. Um, let's see why we are having this hiccup. So the button's clicked. It uh, okay? The button is clicked. It's probably this right here because I think I just need to have it that. Um, we don't need this anymore, so let's take that out. So let's refresh this. All right, and let's try this one. Follow. Oh, that didn't work either. So let's do this. Alert this dot val. And if it doesn't hit that, then we're not returning our success. So we are returning our success. So but it's returning a great big function, which is not what we want. So this val. So instead, we are going to go back in and uh, maybe maybe the scope of this isn't available in here. I don't know, but uh, if it's not, either way, we have this. So we're going to say button. Um, let's see here. Button underscore, uh, and then we're going to say uh, this. Uh, you know what? It doesn't make sense that that isn't working. So if val URL is this attribute, attribute. Maybe try that. All right, this is bugging, so let's figure this out. Let's view the selection source. Let's get the ID here of this one. So the ID of that button is button underscore Stuart. All right, so let's clear this out. Um, how do we clear this out? Anyway, doesn't matter. So, button equals. There we go. So we have our button. So let's see. Uh, let's take a. Uh, let's take this logic right here. So instead of this, we're going to have button. So that is false, which is correct. So let's try that. That is true. So let's try button dot val stop following. And it worked. See that's confusing here. So that being the case, let's just say let's alert out this and see what it comes up with. And let's uh let's take the, all this out for right now. Alright, so refresh, resend, let's hit this one now, it returns an object. Okay, so let's say object dot attribute value. Let's refresh that again. And it's undefined. So this is undefined. So I guess the scope of it isn't in there quite yet. So instead I am going to do just find this element here. Elm equals element, or I'm sorry, uh, let's see here. Well, our message, I wonder what it's returning. Let's see what it's returning on, on, the, uh, on the home controller. So toggle follow. It redirects. That's our problem. We don't want to redirect. So instead of toggle follow via Ajax, and then we're going to find the user. We don't need that. We don't need that. And then render text equals, um, let's say, okay.
Okay, so we don't need that as instance variables. Okay, toggle follow via Ajax. So that's something that we do need to add to our routes. So um, let's go to our routes. Toggle follow map dot toggle follow via Ajax username and action would be our toggle follow via Ajax. So let's see here now if we change this to via Ajax and so now let's see here um, instead of it returning that let's have it return the username user dot username and uh, so now that we have it here we go now that we have it returning the username we can actually have it do this um, message dot val so that should alert either following or not following so let's see here let's refresh and hit stop following uh, something didn't work here the post went over it returned that properly but then it's not evaluating it right so let's just alert our message and see what happens there okay it does return that so let's just say um, let's create an element here elm equals uh, elm equals uh, message and let's alert Elm dot val and see if that works. No, that doesn't work either. So message, I just wonder what type of, that is. It's returning a string, but it's not seeming to find this. Okay, so after a lot of work on this, I finally figured it out. Okay, so we have alert, and then all we had to do was add a button. I forgot that part, so. Good, 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 good. All right, anyway, so we're going to just say elm equals this right here. And uh, so now let's remove those comment outs here and say instead of that, we're going to just do elm dot val. Um, if that equals stop responding, then set the val to follow. You, follow else, set the val to stop following okay so let's give that a shot I really hope this works um, resend here follow elm dot val elm okay so we're bouncing back and forth between uh, uh, oh, of course duh alright so let me hit refresh here and oops forgot a semicolon Okay, so finally, 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 finally. Okay, so let's follow, 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 follow. Why? Oh, that one doesn't work because we can't have dots in our username. So actually, I need to go back and modify my users to where we have, um, to we ha where we actually validate the format of the uh, of the uh, username oh actually we have that already so let's remove uh, that so I believe that should make it so that we don't have any dots so there we go and um, so now if we go to following we're actually following seven people we have our stop following here let's see it removes it you know this is a <laughs> this is a long drawn out project and I appreciate you uh, 
I appreciate you sticking with it with me throughout these four different uh, these four different uh, sessions. Um, I'm going to definitely call it quits on this one. I'm I'm sick of flitter, but I really hope you learned a lot. I know I did. I mean, even going through this stuff and and a lot of this stuff I, I learn as I go. But I hope you understand that. Uh, I'm 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 just a very typical programmer. I think typically, and I try and get the job done first, and then I go back and refactor later. Uh, that's definitely what I recommend you do. Uh, I think it'll make you a more productive programmer, not necessarily a better programmer as far as uh, quality, but it will definitely make you more of a productive programmer. And everybody, in the end of the day, wants to make some money, and I think that's the way to make your money is to be a productive programmer. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you uh, joining me on this one. Hopefully it's not too long after I edit it, but I will uh, make sure that we get as much in as I can. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo.